Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 03636 59 0703 768 Email address lsmedia at livingseed.org or visit our website at www.livingseed.org Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. going to read just two passages and I want to lay it before you uh, tonight. We're going to read the book of Proverbs. Proverbs. I'll read chapter 18. We have read it but we need to read it together tonight. Proverbs chapter 18. Verse 22. And Proverbs chapter 19. Verse 14. Proverbs 18.22. And Proverbs 19, verse 14. Whoso finds a wife, findeth a good thing, and obtains favor of the Lord. Whoso finds a wife, findeth a good thing, and obtains favor of the Lord. And chapter 19, verse 14 says, House and riches are the inheritance of the fathers, and a prudent wife is from the Lord. A prudent wife is from the Lord. Whoso finds a wife findeth a good thing and has obtained favor from the Lord. House and riches they are the inheritance of fathers. And a prudent wife is from the Lord. Whenever God wants to favor a man, whenever God desires to help a man, and to help him accomplish his assignment on earth without having a dent, without having a scatteredness, he does something for that man. He makes and gives him a wife. Whenever God looks at a man and he decides to show him mercy and to take him on a long journey and to bring him to the fulfillment 
of the eternal purpose for which he created him he finds a wife for him whenever God wants to involve a man in something that is going to outlast him and he wants him to have a portion in what God is about to do on the face of the earth part of the preparation he makes for that man is to prepare a wife for him And whenever God wants to do something spectacular on the face of the earth or he wants to raise someone who will cause his purpose to advance he looks into a family and he decides to visit them. When the Lord asks us to call this couple's retreat, we immediately began to sense that something new is about to take place. Something eternal is about to happen again. And so it is with great excitement and yet with great trembling have we responded to God for this particular couple's retreat. We have a clear sense that we are at a threshold of something that is about to break forth again and God wants to lodge it in our families in our marriages and so tonight the first welcome I wish to bring to you is to first of all welcome you unto a new beginning of what God intends to involve you in in the coming days and because what God wants to do has to be born has to be carried has to be brought forth not arbitrarily but in hearts of men and women who are bound together in a covenant relationship of matrimony we sense that something something great something tremendous something that our eyes have not seen is about to happen again and so tonight I just want to take those two scriptures to welcome you and to point some few things so that as we begin to settle into this retreat they will be explaining to us all the various things that we shall be doing I pray that the Lord himself we give you much more than your expectation in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that God will do for you beyond what you ever thought or imagined. And that this will be a takeoff of the very, very purpose why he brought you into your marriages in the name of Jesus Christ. Also finds a wife. 
the Bible says he has found a good thing why many many people in the world have not understood what exactly God was about when he brought about marriage why so many people have misdefined it and they have called it different different uh, uh, description as they think why others just thought well it's something necessary but it's a problem I hear the Lord say also finds a wife has found what a good thing and that that person has obtained favor of the Lord There's a favor that God has decided to release upon your lives by bringing you into your marriages. You will walk in its reality and its full dimensions in the name of Jesus Christ. The second passage I have read quickly underscored what I intended to deal with. It's a house and riches. You can get that from your fathers. You can inherit lands. You can inherit properties. You can inherit houses and riches from your fathers. But a prudent wife is only from the Lord. A prudent wife only comes when the Lord decides to favor you. A faithful husband only comes from the Lord. It doesn't come out of hard work. It doesn't come out of high intellectualism. It doesn't come out of great planning it doesn't come out of meticulous arrangement it doesn't come even because you are beautiful it doesn't come because you are very handsome many many beautiful ladies unfortunately only have broken marriages with broken hearts. Several handsome boys. They have only been tossed to and fro. In between the lives of several saint women. And even though they look handsome, they have nowhere to lay their heads. The reason is because a prudent wife, a faithful husband, does not come from anything else. It only comes from the Lord. It's a favor from the Lord. It's a help that comes only from the Lord. It doesn't come from sweat. And one of the things God will help you to learn is to know that this institution that God has allowed us to enter, it is not the wisdom of intellectual capacity that makes it to work. Those that have been in marriage for many years, they will explain to you that effort of human thinking human reasoning has never made it to work it comes from the Lord so as I welcome you here I welcome you to him who alone has sustained marriages and will sustain our marriage to the end 
I welcome you to him who grants favor to his servants and makes their wives or their husbands the kind of man, the kind of woman that could cause the will of God to be done on the face of the earth. Because whoso finds a wife finds a good thing and he has obtained favor from the Lord and because a prudent wife is only from the Lord as we come to this weekend I want you to know that we are coming to him who not only created marriage who also sustains it he will sustain and push our marriages forward to the glory of his name in the name of Jesus Christ whatever struggles that you have ever had whatever conflict or whatever challenges that you are wondering say how am I going to run on as you come to him who himself has decided to favor you he will respond to every cry of your own heart in the name of Jesus Christ. Some of us we have come looking unto God that before the end of this week the Lord will descend with answers to your prayers. So will it be in the name of Jesus Christ. So tonight I would like to welcome you. I began to say when we began to welcome you before that the Lord Jesus, the first miracle he ever performed after he had been introduced and he returned from the wilderness, the first miracle he performed was to rescue a wedding, a marriage that is about to scatter. Some people may think that that is coincidence, but I never think it was a coincidence. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you that when God wanted to advance his course, his purpose on the face of the earth, he said, it is not good for this man to be alone. I will make a help meet for him. And when God said, I will make a help, the help we saw that God went to make, we'll be discussing that eventually in the course of time from tomorrow, was a woman. And so when the devil also thought, of what can I do to destroy the purpose of God on the face of the earth? Listen, he didn't go about cutting trees. Satan did not go about destroying the streams or the waters. Where did he go? He went to the family of Adam. He went to the family and all he wanted was to make sure that that beautiful family that was set up to bring dominion of the glory of God upon the face of the earth was impaired and destroyed. So when we are talking, I want you to know that the family is in the center of either the move of God or the activity of Satan. There is a battle for the for marriage, for marriages. And the battle for the home 
has become more and more intense as if whosoever whosoever gains upper hand over the home is going to overrun the earth and when it was time for God to move again it still was a family he was looking to use it was a very very interesting matter to me that when Satan came and eroded the family that God made in the beginning and he turned the man against his wife you only need to understand that the attack that ruined the whole world was the attack on the family you will not understand that what happened to Adam and his wife was an eternal damage the woman cried and cried and cried for whatever Satan lured her to do I don't know whether you have ever thought how terrible it was that all that God planned for them as a family all their provisions was scattered they had a beautiful home a beautiful home where the Bible said they were both naked the man and his wife they were not ashamed they had a very beautiful home where the man we say this is the bone of my bones the flesh of my flesh she shall be called woman because she's taken out of man a very joyful relationship God visits them every evening they had a beautiful fellowship there was water supply in their home their home actually is a garden many flowers but when Satan came and attacked the home he attacked the home it's only later on you understand that it is the family system that Satan targeted and you will notice that when you read that Genesis account it will be clear to you that what the devil came to destroy was the family relationship And you will notice that immediately the separation between the man and his wife was apparent. I don't know how to describe to you what happened to that family. But if you only take a little time to look back, you will see how terrible it was that now their regular supply of food was cut off. They will not get anything to eat unless the man went and tilled the ground. And instead of things to grow normally, only thorns and tissues were coming out. The woman was pregnant, but it was a terrible time. It was a terrible, terrible time. And when they deliver their babies the first man called Cain and the junior brother was Abel things appear to have been settled it looks as if Eve has started crying to God and said Lord I made a mistake but you need to restore us before you know it 
the senior brother in the same house from the same womb took his brother out they went to the farm as if they were strolling and the man rose immediately with a dagger and did what and slaughtered his junior brother I don't know what you have never thought I know I know you always know about Cain and Abel it never occurred to you to ask how did Eve the mother fear how did Adam take it that you have two sons and your first son got annoyed with his junior brother and the only thing he could do was to do what? to kill him and bury him and when he came back home he did as if nothing has happened and mama Eve asked where's Abel? he said when, when have I become the watchman for Abel? mama go and look for your son now Why he was behaving like that, I was wondering, how would they eat in that house again? The kind of bereavement that has come upon, upon this woman, how will she cope with it? How did Adam face the reality that in his little home, it has become a battlefield. That attack was the attack of the family. And when even God called Cain, Cain, where is your brother? I hope you hear what Cain said. What did he say? Am I my brother's keeper? Before the incident, God has spoken to him. Cain, why is your countenance falling? Why are you sad? If you do well, will you not be accepted? Behold, Sin lies at your door. Is crouching at your door. You must overcome it. Don't let it overcome you. But you will not listen. I know you never understood. Because you normally look at that situation as something that happened on the street. It happened in a family. So the family had been such a very, very critical instrument that God wanted to use that Satan also has noticed and he has attacked it. So whenever you see attack, even on your own marriage, is it not because of what God wanted to do with you? Whenever you have noticed katakata coming to your marriage, is it not because there is a great divine expectation about what you are going to become? That Satan is saying, before they settle into it, let me see if I can scatter it. The battle for the family. Is still the raging battle that God has arisen this weekend to fight and win in the name of Jesus Christ. But you know, God, God is committed to the family. 
when it was time for him to bring restoration. I have no time to be talking about how several families God visited and decided to do a new thing with them in order to set pace for what God is about to do. For example, when it was time after the generation of uh, Cain was washed off after the flood I hope you remember that even for God to start the kind of restoration it was one family he found again am I right which family is that the family of Noah And it was that family of Noah that went on and on and on and on until they came again to the Tower of Babel and the battle continues. And when God reached out to Abraham, if you remember, God said to Abraham, out of you shall what will happen? Eh? Let's read it. Let's read it. Read Genesis 12. And hear what God says to him at the very beginning of his call. Just look at it. Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, chapter 12 of Genesis verse 1, Now the Lord has said to Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show you. And I will make of you what a great nation and I'll bless you and I'll make your name great and thou shall be a blessing and I'll bless them that bless you and curse him that curses you and in you in you shall what all families of the earth God had been looking because what he wanted to do on the face of the heart has to come from families if we will neglect the family we will not go far in what God wants to do and if God is going to prevail in families I can tell you nations will immediately begin to have a new direction if you are very very conversant you will know that the greatest siege of the kingdom of darkness as I'm talking now is the siege against what? The family. All the battles, the end time battles that the devil is working at, he is aiming at scattering the family and making sure that family no longer stands to fulfill the purpose of God on the face of the earth. But God also has risen up to bring restoration, revival, and refocusing upon the family. And we sense that this meeting is part of that divine visitation. And we will see it break forth into many, many nations all over the world in the name of Jesus Christ. I welcome you to a new beginning, a threshold of what God wants to do. And I'm trusting God that you, being a partaker of this meeting, you will rise tall, you will become a formidable force, your family is going to become a center for the particular move of God in this generation in the name of Jesus Christ. God 
God immediately was saying to Abraham, In you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. God is talking about the family. And it was very significant that when Jesus Christ was going to be born, God needed what? A family. God needed a family. God needed a man and a woman to host what he wanted to do. Even though Jesus Christ was going to be born of the Spirit, the mother was going to be overshadowed by the Holy Ghost. Yet, it has to be in the context of a family. It will be interesting for us to have a panoramic study of the family that produced Jesus. The family that raised him. What was it like? But tonight, that is not what we want to deal with. I just want to welcome you. And I say it was also significant that the first appearance of Jesus and the first miracle he was going to do was also in the context of a marriage. And for the next few minutes, let me ask you to join me just to examine that miracle so that we can pick two or three issues of prayer before I release you uh, tonight. You know that what has drawn me to it was the final verse of chapter 1 of John eh? and the final verse of the story of that miracle in the Cana of Galilee. Two verses that set the context for that story. Look at verse 51 of John chapter 1. Are you there? He said, And he says unto him, or maybe from verse 50, Jesus answered and said to him, was talking to Nathaniel, Because I said unto you, I saw you under the fig tree, believest thou? Thou shalt see greater things than this. And he says unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Here and after, you shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. And then they said, And the third day, And the third day, I was touched because Particularly, the book of John chapter 1 was like uh, uh, doing something as if he's dealing with uh, the, uh, as if he was keeping a daily diary. You know, in verse 35, he said, And the next day, after John stood and two of his disciples, and in verse 43, they said, And the day following, are you saying that? Chapter 1, verse 20, 35 said, Again the next day. Then, verse 43, And the day following. And then, chapter 2, verse 1, What did they say? And the third day, There was a marriage in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. Be 
before I read it, I want to look at the final verse that I said was setting the contest for me. And this this beginning, you do notice that verse 11 says, this beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth what is glory. To me, it was not coincidence that the beginning and it looks to me as if the beginning of God showing forth his glory has to also be in the context of our own marriages. We have done many things by the grace of God. We have taught so much and we have done we have, by the grace of God we have all kind of things that he has led us to do. But God particularly began to say again there is something that I, he, he wants to bring about on the face of the earth and the contest will be in the family. The contest will be the family. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and he manifested forth his glory and his disciples believed on him. So quickly what was the matter that I want you to look at as we pray together tonight? Number one there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee the mother of Jesus was there and both Jesus was called and his disciples told what? The marriage. My first request to you tonight. Will you please invite him in a very, very particular manner tonight and say, Lord Jesus, visit our marriage. Lord, visit what? My marriage. I want you to come. I want you to come. There is something Jesus does when you ask him to come afresh into your marriage. There is something that will break forth if you will ask him to come to your marriage. At first, when Jesus was called to be in the marriage, the mother of Jesus was there. But Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And it looked as if there was nothing he was going to do. It looked as if he was a quiet visitor. And nothing was said about him. And maybe he was actually sitting outside. I don't know. But something happened. The Bible said when they wanted wine. Old King James used the word when they wanted wine. But what they actually say is that when their wine finished, when they lacked wine, the mother of Jesus says to him, they have no wine. What could make their marriage to be thick as finished? What started them off on a high note has suddenly dried up. That thing that Mary did, somebody must do it tonight. There may be someone here. You know, I introduced those who have just married one week ago or two weeks ago. 
to one year. And I was deliberate about it because those ones, there's excitement. They're still in the moon. And we thank God. And they will not have appreciated this kind of meeting because they are just enjoying. I wish natural wine of marriages ever remain like that. I wish many people are able to stay where they started. I wish all the exciting texts, all the exciting special cards, all the succulent words, I wish it has a way of being there forever. And if that was there, maybe you would not have needed to invite him. But when you read your Bible very well, you will see it now. The Bible said, she said, they have no why. Something has finished. Something has dried. Something that used to be there is no more here again. And he came and told Jesus, Say, Jesus, they have no wine. You see, she has not said more than that. But Jesus knew the implication of what she said. Do you know that Jesus knew the implication? He said, Woman, what have I to do with you? My hour is not yet come. <laughs> you know, the woman simply said one word. But Jesus knew the implication. The woman just said, Sir, they have no wine. No. All the giri 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 is about to finish. As you see, the MC fusing up and down is because there's nothing again. You see, all the long announcement is making and the calling long list is because it's a cover up. Something has finished. Hmm. Something has finished. All this thing that they are doing now is because the wine has finished. And Jesus knew that that woman was only saying, if you don't intervene, this thing will collapse again. If you don't step in, the man that used to destroy marriages is about to do it again. If you don't act, something will be bad here again. And Jesus said, but no, 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 woman, what have I to do with you? My time has not come. You know that the woman didn't respond to that. As if Mary said, well, sir, I don't know what you are waiting for. But we are in a desperate need here. And we can't do without your intervention. And if you don't do something, everything here will scatter. I pray that somebody will be desperate in this meeting as to call Jesus and to say, Lord Jesus, the wine of my marriage is finished. I have been struggling. I have been trying. It's not like it is before. What I'm doing now is just that I am just managing. I don't want people to know that there's nothing again. I don't want people to know that we are dried inside. But we laugh on the outside. When the excitement was there, we had everything. But now, Jesus, they have no wine. And because Mary was insistent, I want you to see the insistence of that mama. Even though he said, Woman, what have I to do with you? My hour is not yet come. She did not take it. She did not take that no for an answer. 
somebody will insist with God in this meeting I say father whatever you must do whatever you must do to set my marriage on fire again you will do it in the name of Jesus Christ the Bible said even though Jesus said my hour has not come Mary was not concerned about that Mary said I have made a request and instead of arguing with Jesus whether your time is up or not he just turned to the servant what did she say to the servant please the mother said unto the servant whatsoever he says to you what tell somebody by your side this night whatever he says to you in this meeting do it you see i don't want you to capitalize and say my wine has finished no 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 there's going to be a restoration in this meeting there's going to be a refreshing in this meeting there's going to be a divine touch in this meeting. There's going to be a release of the supernatural upon your marriages in the name of Jesus Christ. And the master, even though he will say, my time is not come, but there's a woman who is desperate. There's a woman who will not, will not take a no for an answer. There's a woman that will not go back empty handed there's one that he said well we know that you are the one that can turn anything around you can turn this marriage around whatever he says to you do it and when Jesus realized that there was nothing else to do than to act He said unto the servants who are waiting, Fill the water pot with water. They fill them up to the brim. He said to them, Draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast. And they carried it there. And when the ruler of the feast had tasted the wine that was made, the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the servant withdrew the water knew the governor of the feast called the bridegroom and that's where we are stopping and he says to him every man all of you are you there to look at verse 10 can you all look at verse 10 every man at the beginning what do they do they just set forth good wine and when men are well drunk then that which is worse but thou hast kept the good wine until now <laughs> let me ask you was he the one that kept the good wine till now eh? listen sir and this is oh this is the point and i will be asking you to rise in prayer with it he said every man that was a revelation every man normally set forth what the good wine at the beginning I've never known any man who will start his marriage by beating his wife have you ever seen anyone like that talk to me please What does every man do? They bring their best when? At the beginning. If you are going on the road and you mistakenly knock your head, I mean your leg against a stone, what did your man say at the beginning? What did he say? What did he say? He said, Whoa! Darling, I'm sorry. I don't even know why I, I foolishly took this bad road. 
car should I carry you I'm sorry you will see I will quickly go on his knees and begin to check I hope you are not bruised car please pardon me pardon me it was my fault I was thinking this road would be a shortcut I didn't know every man at the beginning what did they do they bring forth the good wine until you are drunk until you are hooked when they have put that thing in your hand and you cannot remove it again then what does he do he bring forth which one the bad one it's the same man oh. the last time you hit your leg against the same stone on the same road what did he say <laughs> what did he say he said I don't even know where you are putting your eye you carrying your leg that you are eating the stone eh? must I carry you you know the road was rough and you are still carrying your leg as if you don't know sorry oh, but you know we need to move my meeting is 8 30 and I don't want to be late. All this mess, mess, mess you are doing, we cannot do it here. Get ready, get ready quickly. And if you think he's spinning, you use this handkerchief. But let's go quickly. And if you think you can't make it, just uh, wait, I will dash. When you are free, join me. Excuse me, what has happened to the first wine? It has finished. They normally bring forth the best wine. When the Bible says every man, including Christian men, including brothers, including pastors, some of you, you are saying, hey, kai, 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 kai. If I know this is who you are, I will not have said yes. He said, You have said yes already. You said it. And you cannot unsay it. But if you want to say, you are not marrying me again, go and start. That's what I am. And I cannot, because of you, begin to run up and down. Settle down. until you come he said honey how can the food be sweet when my honey is not around and when you sat down to eat you know how you cut that special meat and say open your mouth and he put it there I wish the wine never finishes He came running, he came checking, he came caring. Hmm. But when you are drunk, they set forth that which was worse. So the man said, What is it? We know that this is what every man does. If your marriage is only the marriage of every man, there is no hope. He 
Come on, if you are sitting before me and say, well, my whole husband is not like that. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. While Jesus is around, you better call him. You better ask him what he does that keeps the wine of people's marriage ever fresh. Let him do it for you in the name of Jesus Christ. I won't be telling you stories of what every man does. You may have known it. Even your man, the man that you are, are just, it's just the fact that how can we say we are no longer doing it? Otherwise, you know that the wine. But that day, Jesus was standing there to turn the water onto wine. You know before, if it was for natural man, what would they do? The little wine that's about to finish, what would they do? They would dilute it with water. So that it only had the flavor. You have a smell as if you are taking wine. But what are you drinking? Now water. Now water. And if they think that you are about to know, they just look for sakari and drop it there. Hey! Every man. Tonight, it is not by coincidence that Jesus' first beginning of miracles, by which he showed forth his glory, was in the context of marriage. And I sense that God is about to begin to show forth his glory again in our homes that will cause another mighty move of God in the nations of the earth. And he is standing here. He said, I particularly called you to this meeting because I need to inject fresh wine into your matrimony. I'm going to stop at this. But I'm going to ask you to do three things. First, he was called. Jesus never intrudes people's marriages. Oh. If you still can manage it, he may never worry you. That's why you saw he sat outside. And until their wine finished, he did not poke nose. Until they invited him, he did not say, I am around. And if the mother of Jesus never came to speak to her and said, Look, they have no wine, he will remain with his power. And he may go away with his power because nobody has asked him. But when the mother of Jesus saw that Haya, the thing has finished, and she came and said, they have no wine. And Jesus testing how desperate she is. Woman, what have I to do with you? My time has not come. My hour is not here. He was only testing whether she was desperately in need of his intervention. If somebody is not desperate about Jesus' intervention, he may do nothing tonight. If somebody says, I can still manage, I can still mix water and begin to just go on, the master may just look at you and say, okay, let's see how far you can go. But if somebody is in this meeting and say, Lord, I actually came to tell you the wine of my affection is finished. The excitement I had 
when I was entering into this thing has finished. The understanding and the revelation of the glory that I thought we will enter into. I never expected what I'm saying now. There are many bombs that is now around my life. I need a divine touch. Sometime your husband may still be acting as if he's still in charge. But you knew already that something has finished. Particularly if he's a popular man. If he's a preacher. He's very concerned about public image. So even though everything has finished inside, he still come out and shake like this. And it looks as if some anointing is still there. I wish you will know how to sneak to Jesus and say he has no wine. I sleep with him. I wake up with him. I know something has finished. Do something for us, Lord. Whatever he says to you tonight, do it. And when they did it, the Bible said, the man said, but you, where have you kept the good wine until now? There's the good wine. You will taste it again. There's the good wine. It will flood you with it again. I am just excited that some, something is going to break forth from here. I'm going to see marriages <laughs> not only revamped, revived, restored, I will see them re-engineered, re reinvigorated with fresh wine in the name of Jesus Christ. Would you like to stand and pray with me? Just a simple time of prayer tonight. Thank you, Father. Holy Ghost, do it again. Do it again in my life today. Open my eyes to see Jesus who is seated upon Holy Ghost. Do it for me. Open my eyes. Open my eyes to see Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, tonight. We will not take your presence in this meeting for granted. We have just arrived, yet we saw you coming with favors in your hand. We saw you coming with divine intervention where houses and riches have failed. We see you stepping into this arena. Loaded with a divine blessing to turn our marriages around for good. To re-inject into us something fresh from above. Lord, the only cry I have tonight is that you will not have a reason to pass us by. You will not have a reason, oh God, to go away without helping somebody in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Some of us were already desperate. Some wives beg their husbands, say, please, follow me to that meeting. This will be the beginning of our miracle. Father, I ask that this tonight will be the beginning of the miracle where you will show forth your glory in our lives, in our homes, in our matrimony, and in our destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. Some husbands are saying, I'm tired. I'm only keeping, I'm only keeping on. I don't know what to do next. What I wanted is not what I got. The wine has dried. But thank you that the master is here. Lord, I ask that even tonight, all those who will dare come to you and say, Jesus, I have no wine again. You will do something deliberate about their case. As little as tonight may appear, it will be a beginning of that miracle. In the name of Jesus. I don't know, is there someone sit standing here tonight? Is there somebody who has a mother heart and say, Lord, everything is just like that. What I started with had finished. And if you don't do a new thing for me, I don't know where I'm going from here. Did you come in on the verge of a breakdown? Is this like the point of last resort? Is this that because you have cried for years and say, when will they call us together? And God has said, yes, I've heard your cry. Could you have been standing in this place? Yes, your face looks nice, but your inside is dry. Can you step to Jesus tonight and say, Lord, I have come to you. When the choir sang to say, I have come to you, Lord Jesus. Out of my trouble, out of my sorrow, out of my struggle, I have come to you. Who is there tonight? Even in this little beginning, you feel like just coming to him. I don't know, my heart is dry. My affection is finished. I have struggled. I'm almost at the point of breaking. Won't you do something? Inject something fresh into my heart and into my matrimony, into my marriage. Where are you? Where are you? You want to just come? Just come. Just come. And as you are stepping before God tonight, as simple as it is, God bless you. Thank you, sir. Just come. Just come. Just come. And if you notice that your husband He's running out, crying to God. Lift up your hand and say, Lord, could this night be the night I've been waiting on you for? Could this be the time that you have been saying you will remember me? the meeting that you are saying in the course of this year I will visit you I will end your sorrow I 
will reset things. Did you hear God saying, I will make things new? Are you saying to God, it is true, in the beginning, it was good wine, I thought it would last. For me, it lasted six months after it has died. For me, we managed it for two years. But I remember when things turned. But I will say, it was when we were transferred to that place that I noticed the, the turnabout and I don't know how to get it again. Jesus, I and this night, the Lord is saying, Can you bring it? Can you bring it? Can you bring it? Can you bring it? Can you come to me? Rather than struggle, rather than complain. God bless you, my friend. God bless you, my brother. God bless you. God bless you, dear sisters. Thank you, that man. That was right. Anything you thought you know how to do didn't work out. Tonight, Lord, I come. I'm bringing my brokenness to you. I'm bringing my dryness to you. I'm bringing the perforated heart unto you. Even tonight, Lord Jesus, come and do a new thing. Come and do something new, Lord. Thank you. You are still needing to come. Just come. Just come. If it is here, you need to come. Just come. God bless you, brother. God bless you, dear brother. Please stretch out your hand to God tonight as you pray. God bless you, my friend. God bless you, dear brother. You know this meeting we are only couples. And we are doing Lord. Jesus, I come. Whatever you will do. Jesus, I Whatever you want to do for me, Lord, here am I. I have no other way to do. This meeting must turn our marriage around, Lord. Jesus, I My heart has to, to receive a fresh touch. Thank you, ma'am. Do you know that somebody had married? It's okay, it's okay. For 20 years. And it looks as if everything is working well. Unfortunately. The whole thing scattered. It was unexpected. But the serpent came in. And everything was upturned. Tonight, God is doing a new thing. Thank you, my friend. Somebody still need to run down. We can't wait for you again. You need now to run. God bless you. God bless you. We can't wait again. God bless you. If you are needing to come, you have to run now. Now. We cannot wait again. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, even tonight. Even tonight, Lord. Even tonight, Lord. Don't say your hour to help us has not come. This is the hour for our deliverance. This is the hour for your intervention. This is the hour for a new beginning. This is the hour for you to send us help. 
بس نئے موسمات کو پھولے پھولے کو روکو وقت آسانی سے انابت کی سلوکی اس کا پاس بس نئے کو روکو وقت کے دے کے دے دن میں ہی میرا کو یعنی اسوس ہے جو دوری in our hearts in our lives Holy Spirit thank you thank you thank you I feel sense that there is one man who is still struggling struggling with God and I hear you say Nobody should intimidate me to, to say I'm giving my heart. How will you struggle with God? How do you hope to sleep? The heaven is saying tonight is the night we have been to help your life. And you are holding tight. What are you holding on to? As I pronounce prayers. If you have not found yourself on your knees out here, do it now. Do it now. Tonight is that night. God will bring it for you. After now, we don't know what may happen again. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. We are praying. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Just get on your knees. How strong will you be to struggle with your God? How strong? How strong will you have been? Get on your knees now. My friend, if it is here you are coming, you must need to move fast. And say, tonight, something has to turn this marriage around for me. Lord, help me. God bless you, my friend. Thank you. We are praying already. We are praying already. Thank you, my friends. Stop for this hand. Stretch it out above your head. And just say, Lord, I have come. You are coming here. You need to run, sir. You need to run. You need to move fast. You have to run now. We can't wait for you again. You might say, maybe I will do it tomorrow. The Holy Spirit said, today is your day. This night, God has ordained to visit you. You have struggled for, for years. But tonight, God is saying, I have come to dismantle that. I have come to finish it. I have come to start you off on a new place. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, thank you, Jesus. Thank you as as you are coming, joining that hand and say, Lord, as we come, take this life, take this marriage. That which we have struggled with for years must end tonight. <laughs> 